the day today. We're back with the latest Tazian news. Still with me, Vanessa. President of South Korea receives AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine to combat COVID-19. South Korea's President Moon Jae-in receives AstraZeneca's coronavirus vaccine as he prepared to visit the United Kingdom for a G7 summit in June. The presidential Blue House in statement says Moon attends a community clinic near his office in downtown Seoul with his wife and nine senior officials who will accompany him on the trip, including National Security Advisor Su Hong, said in a statement. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has invited South Korea, India and Australia to attend the summit as guests. South Korea's health authorities begin inoculating high-risk medical workers and the critically ill at the end of February as it battles a third wave of COVID-19 outbreaks and aims to achieve herd immunity by November. The government allowed those who are on key public mission, such as diplomatic trip or military task, to be vaccinated starting this month. Myanmar protesters on motorbikes as convoys through the way opposing military coup in Myanmar. A convoy of hundreds of protesters on motorbikes drive through Dawei city in southern Myanmar, joining demonstrators around the country in opposing the military rule. Despite a rising death toll at the hands of security forces, protesters drove across the city with loud music playing from speakers and carrying flags of the National League for Democracy attached to the back of the motorbikes and locals cheering from roadsides. The junta appears equally determined to resist growing outside pressure to compromise. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group says, with the latest killing the death toll since the coup rose to at least 248. The military has shown no sign of being swayed and has defended its takeover which derailed a slow transition to democracy in a country that was under strict military rule from a 1962 coup until the generals initiated its reforms a decade ago. The junta says a November 8 election won by Suu Kyi's party was fraudulent, an accusation rejected by the Electoral Commission. The military leaders have promised a new election but have not set a date. Chinese military sends medical supplies to 50 countries to combat COVID-19 disease. The Ministry of National Defense says Chinese military sends medical supplies to 50 countries around the world to help them fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Chinese military provides masks, ventilators and other medical supplies to 50 countries, including Mozambique, Serbia, Cuba and Laos. Apart from that, Chinese military also provides COVID-19 vaccines to Pakistan, Cambodia, Mongolia and the Philippines and sends medical teams to four countries and holds video conferences on pandemic control with military of 18 countries and international organizations. The Ministry of National Defense also says that Chinese military will continue working with other military on COVID-19 control, deepen cooperation in non-traditional security sectors and make new contribution to building a global community of health for all and to safeguarding the world's peace and stability. Police using water cannons to disperse protesters in Bangkok. Talent police shot water cannon at anti-government protesters from behind a barricade of shipping containers and barbed wire to stop protesters from advancing towards the Grand Palace in Bangkok. About 1,000 protesters gather near the Grand Palace in Bangkok in an area known as Sanam Luang or Royal Field. 
The rally comes after Parliament this week failed to pass a bill to rewrite a military-backed constitution, one of the protesters' main demands. A mass trial for protest leaders begin this week against the activists who were accused of sedition and insulting the monarchy. Talent's youth protest movement has posed the biggest challenge so far to Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha. Protester says he engineers a process that would preserve the political status quo and keep him in power after a 2019 election. Prayut has rejected that. North Korean embassy in Malaysia is closed after the two countries cut ties. North Korea's embassy in Malaysia officially shut down with diplomatic staff leaving the compound two days after both countries abruptly cut ties. North Korea announces it will sever diplomatic relations with Malaysia after the Southeast Asian nation extradited a North Korean national to the United States to face money laundering charges. Malaysia says it deeply regretted North Korea's decision, adding that it will close its embassy in Pyongyang in response and order all North Korean diplomats and their dependents in Kuala Lumpur to leave the country within 48 hours. Malaysia also says its extradition of Moon Chol Myung has been done according to law. Moon had been arrested in 2019 after the United States accused him of laundering funds through front companies and issuing fraudulent documents to support illicit shipments to North Korea. He had denied the allegations, saying they were politically motivated. Philippines Alveolas Bat Ecology Team study bats with the aim of preventing future coronaviruses. A team of bat ecologist Philip Albiola holds researchers about bat want to know and how their viruses can affect human beings because of nearly a decade and the general nature of bats much longer for 24 years. Since 2007, the virus hunters have caught thousands of bats in the Philippines for analysis and detected new viruses from them, including coronaviruses, hantaviruses, henipaviruses, and poxviruses all with the help of other scientists from Japan. Their latest project involves performing a risk factors analysis by developing a simulation model that can predict the dynamic of coronavirus in bats by analysing specific factors like time, climate, season, temperature and its effects on viral transmissions and transmissibility to humans. What we're trying to, to look into are other strains of coronavirus that have the potential to, to jump to humans. Alviola knows there are diseases risks involved in studying bats, but says he's not deterred. If we know the virus itself and where we know where it came from, we know how to isolate that virus geographically. Although no direct relations have yet been made, the World Health Organization have been studying if the SARS-CoV-2 originated from bats due to its similar viral makeup. I think uh, our project has, the, has this amazing uh, um, promise of possibly avoiding a next pandemic by determining where or when or possibly when this, uh, uh, the next pandemic will occur. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, bats are a group of mammals with more than 1,200 different species. Launch of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine in Indonesia increases citizens' concern. Oh, 
rollout of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine in Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim-majority nation, began despite controversy over whether the Anglo-Swedish product is halal or permissible under Islam. Controversy arose when the Indonesia Ulama Council, the main Muslim group that issues halal certification, says that though the vaccine is not halal because it contains trypsin sores from the pancreas of a pig, it can still be used in a time of emergency. The East Java chapter of the council says the vaccine is halal before shots are administered for some of their members. AstraZeneca says the vaccine contains no pork-derived ingredients. Indonesia receives 1.1 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine via the COVAX Vaccine Alliance scheme earlier this month and starts distributing it to six provinces, including East Java and the Holiday Island of Bali. The country has recorded the worst COVID-19 epidemic in the region with 1,471,225 cases and 39,865 deaths. Thailand border school children taking part in evacuation drills due to possible conflict between Myanmar army and ethnic groups. Thailand elementary school students take part in an evacuation drill in the northern part of the country in preparation of possible conflict arising between the Myanmar army and armed ethnic groups. Video shot by a local news station shows students squatting lying and walking behind rangers. The drill is set up in preparation for students living in the border town of Mai Hong Song province. More than two dozen ethnic armed groups are active in Myanmar's borderlands, while the Karen National Union, one of the active group, failed to support the coup resistance. <laughs> Myanmar has been in turmoil since the military overthrew an elected government led by Nobel Peace Laureate Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st, bringing an end to 10 years of tentative democratic reforms. According to the figures from the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group, at least 249 people have now been killed since the coup. Myanmar activists in Japan call on the Japanese government to take stronger measures to end violence in Myanmar. <laughs> Myanmar activists in Japan call for the Japanese government and international community to take stronger steps to stop the killing in their homeland, urging the imposition of an arms embargo to put pressure on the military junta. I think uh, the Japanese government should... Uh, direct Activists say though Western nations have imposed more sanctions on groups and individuals linked to last month's coup, Kyo Kyo Soe, a board director of the Union of Myanmar Citizens Association in Japan, urges Tokyo to use its clout to speak directly with the generals whose brutal crackdown on protest has left at least 261 dead. A Japanese official says that Japan is monitoring Myanmar's recent military coup and will consider how to respond to developments there. Japan is a major aid donor to Myanmar and there have been long been close economic and business ties. But Zhao Min Hutut, head of the Burmese Rohingya Association in Japan, says nobody should recognize the current regime in any form, condemning recent steps as not enough. In um, Myanmar, the current people put out a, a statement. China announces sanctions against 10 European individuals and four others on China's imperial sovereignty. China announces sanctions against 10 individuals and 4 entities on the European Union site that had severely harmed China's sovereignty and interest and maliciously spread lies and disinformation. Foreign Ministry spokesperson says the European Union imposes unilateral sanctions on relevant Chinese individuals. The spokesperson says this move, based on nothing but lies and disinformation, disregards and distorts facts, grossly interferes in China's internal affairs fragmentary breaches international law and basic norms governing international relations and severely undermine China and European Union relations. According to the spokesperson, the individuals and entities to be sanctioned are five people from the European Union Parliament, one person from Dutch Parliament, one from Belgian Federal Parliament, one of the Seimas of the Republic of Lithuania, German scholar Adrian Zenz, Swedish scholar Bjorn Jarzen, Political and Security Committee of the Council of the European Union, 
Subcommittee on Human Rights of the European Parliament, the Mercator Institute for Chinese Studies in German, and the Alliance of Democracies Foundation in Denmark. The individual's concerns and their families are prohibited from entering the mainland, Hong Kong and Macau of China. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice weekend. Bye.